So it's time for this week's GAA preview and it is a massive week for Donegal GAA as they take on Armagh in the quarterfinal of the Ulster Senior Football Championship. Joining us, of course, is our uh, match analyst, Martin McHugh. Martin, good to see you. Good to talk to you. Hello, Ashin. Well, Martin, before we actually delve into the game itself, a lot has happened this week uh, off the pitch. Uh, a number of the Armagh players have had their bands overturned. Uh, from a Donegal point of view, they're still going to be without Orr McFadden Ferry and, and Neil McGee. Uh, the CCC at times has come in for sort of criticism over the, the, the situation and how things have panned out and unfolded. Now, I know that you're part of the CCC see at Croke Park and, and you can't say a while lot on, on, on the situation, but how would you sum up the events that have taken place this week ahead of the game? Well, I think, as you know, when, when, when we look at it, I suppose a lot of stuff has been highlighted uh, and, and with all the appeals and everything else and where the road that the GE is going, going down and everything else, and I would just be very... Fearful of, of the road that we are go, are going down at, at the minute, you know, and everything else. So I think we look at it from, first of all, from a referee's point of view. Referees ref a match on the Sunday. Some of them are working on Sunday evening and some of them are, they're all definitely working on a Monday and everything else. So, I mean, I mean, to get the report done out and everything else done out and everything else, you know, it's probably, you know, the way it is with them and everything else. It's not easy for them and everything else. But from, from a CCC point of view, the CCCC, when they meet, they just... Uh, Go on the referee's report, and that's what the, what they do, and everything else. And I know there was criticism about of, of the Rian O'Neill affair. Uh, my reading about it, I wasn't sitting on it. The fact that Donegal was involved had nothing to do with it. I didn't get get any information from the CCC about about the case at all. And uh, I I when when uh, what I know is what they do is that maybe when they looked at the, when the, the the appeals went in, they went back and studied the video of the match, and then they ended up. Seeing the the real O'Neill case, and and they put that to the referee, then asking the referee, did he deal with a situation or not? And then that goes back to the CCCC, and they make a decision on it. Then, so that's the way it works. And uh, you know, uh, I know some people are saying maybe that the CCCC are not backing the, the referees. And I mean, that's of course they back the referees. They're a very honourable group. Uh, the whole lot of them, the people that's in it, and everything else. And and and. Uh, the thing, the thing about it is they just make a decision, go on the referee's report, and then that goes back to the county boards, and then they make the decision to appeal it or whatever else goes on. But, uh, you know, the CCCC, when they sit down, is really on the referee's report. If they do study videos and that there, they'll go to the referee then and ask him to ask the referee, did they deal with this situation or not? And uh, that's basically the way it works. But, I mean, it's gone down another road then of, of appeals and everything else. And suppose the big thing that came out this week, Oshin, out of it is that people are saying that, you know, when you contribute to a Malay, you're part of it and you get your one match ban or whatever and the referee class out there. Now, they're, they're saying now after what happened this week that it's a, that you have to, that the referee has to explain exactly how did you contribute to a Malay and everything else. And I think we have another case probably coming where they're going to look at it is that, that players, that they're saying now that people are going into the Malay to protect their teammates. So is it the rule book? Is 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 it the rule books is the problem or whatever the problem is? Are we going to have to look at the rule book from a GA point of view and readdress the whole thing? Are we going down the road of having having a site siting committee like they have in within the rugby and everything else? Or the, the other thing we can look at is that you're allowed, some people are saying you're allowed one appeal and one appeal only. And if you lose that, that they double the ban, maybe or something like that there. But definitely. It's been highlighted now, Ashin, as you said, everybody all over the country is talking about it and everything else. It is a massive problem. Some people are saying it's a joke and everything else. The one thing about it is highlighted now and it's going to have to be addressed because we're going to have bigger problems coming down the road. Yeah, uh, we wait to see uh, what's going to happen now in, in the coming months. But Martin, this, there's no short or there's no quick fix for this situation. Is There's going to take time for, for changes to, to be made and uh, to try and improve the appeal system on, on disciplinary issues. Yeah, well, it's it, it, it's you know it's the, the thing about it is suppose we look at it that maybe maybe from a GA point of view there's too many appeals allowed you know with the DRA as well where team, people can go to that there and everything else as well, you know what was interesting suppose I back in my time you know when I played football, you were sent off mostly in the right nearly all the time in the right any player was sent off mostly in the right and all the time you were sent some players were sent off in the wrong and they just took it on the chin. There's other times players weren't sent off they should have been sent off weren't sent off so. You know, and we got on with it that time. And, you know, maybe it was a lot easier that time than it is now uh, with the way it is. But that's the way the system has moved on now. And particularly at inter-county level, you know, there's a lot of work and a lot of everything else going into it and everything else. So look at someone that will, you know, I would say, 
when the season's over, it'll definitely have to be addressed by the GEA. And whether we have to look at the whole rule book and everything else, uh, there's something to be done because it is probably complicated and everything else. And, you know, the, the people that is very, very tough on as referees, I mean, they're looking at a situation now when a situ an incident happens in a game now where we have a melee, if it does happen in any game this weekend, then the referee's going to the, going to the umpires and the umpires are saying, well, I'm not sure did they want to protect their player. This is why they, why they went into the melee or not. So that's definitely looking at it. That's going to have to be addressed. So, yeah, a lot of stuff to be addressed down the road. But sure, it wouldn't be the GEA if we didn't have situations like this, Oshie. Let's focus on the game in hand then, Martin. Um, how big a boost is it to the visitors to Bal Buffet this weekend that all of a sudden have nearly a full deck to, 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 to pick from off the back of what happened? Yeah, it has to be a big boost to them, particularly when, you know, Donegal... Uh, didn't appeal appeal their uh, their two players and, and they end up now short them players and everything else. So I think it is definitely a boost. It does probably add a wee bit of pressure on them that they're coming now with a full side. It's a, it's a very very big match for both teams, but it's particularly it becomes now a massive ma match for for Armagh coming down. You know to to make that breakthrough from their point of view, looking at it and. Uh, uh, it's going to be a great game. It's going to be a very enjoyable game. I think the weather's going to be good and everything else. And you know, we're looking forward to it. And suppose maybe with the back door and everything else, it does take a bit of the pressure off. But it'll be heated atmosphere about Bal Buffet. We had a lot of big matches against Tyrone and Bal Buffet in the past. And this is definitely going to be a big one against Armagh now. Yeah, it's been a while since uh, Donegal actually uh, lost a game in the opening round of the championship in Bal Buffet. I think 2010, Martin, maybe it was the last time that that happened. But if Donegal are going to overcome Armagh, um, they, they need to have as many players available as, as possible. Declan Boner confirmed this week that Oshin Gallon uh, seems to be the only one that's going to miss out through injury. Obviously, Owen McFadden Ferry, you would have seen, has been, been a starter. But uh, Donegal is going to need everybody firing on all cylinders, are they? Yeah, exactly. And I think even going back to that game in 2010, I think it was after extra time down, beat Donegal that year after extra it was after extra time in Bal Buffet that day and, and uh, down went to the All-Ireland final that year as well. And Cork beat them in the All-Ireland final. But I think you're right. They're going to have everybody firing all cylinders. We're at home in Bal Buffet. You know, that's an advantage to us. We're hard to beat there. You know, I know Monon came down this year and beat us in the league and everything else, but uh, we have a good record there. And Hugh said, oh, she had a very good record in the championship there. So, yeah, we've hopefully everybody's available and uh, available and going well and everything else. And, you know, it'll, it'll be, it's going to be, don't rule out that this game going to extra time, even with, with there not much between the two sides. You feel, you know, we, we look at we look at the league match and everything else against them and everything else. And I know they weren't a wild lot of stake, but in the end of the world, the wild lot is only a kick of a ball in it. So it's going to be very, very close. Do you know what I mean? It's what the Ulster Championship is about and everything else. And uh, I think that, you know, if Donegal have everybody available, they have a great chance. Yeah. Uh, if we go back to that game in Letter Kenny, Donegal were, were cruising up until half time, Martin. And then Rian O'Neill was introduced and uh, Rory Grugan was introduced as well to the game in, in the second half. And both of those players were the players that, that were doing the damage. How do you deal with Rian O'Neill this time around? Because he's uh, we're not, they're not going to wait the half time to bring him on this time around, Martin. No, I don't. I don't think so. I'm not, definitely not going to wait to half time. But I think looking at that day is funny. They, interesting, they took him on Osh and they played him out the field, so they didn't put him into the full forward lane at all. And I expect them to start him inside this, this day. So will Donegal probably Brendan McCall will pick up pick him up in, in the full forward. He was in there and when he, he does drift out the field. He's one of the great players, one of the best players in the country at the minute. I know we say people say David Clifford's ahead of everybody else in the country, but he's up there with them, Ryan O'Neill and. But he's brilliant that he's got it. Donegal would be very disciplined because he's a brilliant free taker off the ground. He's a lovely, one of these players, lovely striker of the ball. We know that the Oshie McConville's actually his uncle and everything else, who was a brilliant striker of, of a dead ball off the ground as well. He's a lovely striker. Have to be very disciplined not to give away frees because he will kick frees. And, and you know, the surface in Bal Buffet we know is very good. There's always a place when I kick frees, even myself come back along to me, oh, I love kicking in Bal Buffet. It's one of the pitches, whatever kind of surface on you like kicking dead balls of it so I think it'd be very important to be to be well disciplined and uh, we know that Michael Murphy can do the same thing for Donegal off the ground at the other end with his right foot or Pat and Birdie to the left but I think discipline is going to be very important and that's why I think if Donegal can run enough ball and run at Armagh and uh, make them you know give away fouls and that there that that could come all down to that there yeah well, you mentioned Michael Murphy we've seen that um in numerous games with Michael Murphy and it spells as well in the last game uh, against Armagh uh, Murphy creating the space for for McBerty because he was dragging three or four players uh, with him um, is maybe that a tactic that, that Donegal is going to have to implement more this time around than what they did the last day 
Ah, yeah, exactly. I mean, we know, you know, Michael, anywhere you go in Ireland, Michael Murphy's the most feared player and 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 Donegal and everything else. And the good thing about it is when he plays and you know, and if he stays inside and plays inside, they, they will that could mean the other t- Armar, whoever you're playing, will drift players back to cover that space and everything else. That gives more freedom out the field for the players to, to get going out the field. So yeah, it's important tactically. You know, we can't expect them to to carry us like, like he's been doing in the past every day he goes out and everything else. But you expect it whatever, you know, to use them in the in the right way is exactly what you said, right? You know, and uh, looking to leave the space for other players like Pat and Berry. Always, I've always remember Pat and Berry playing really well against our mass. So expect a big game from Pat and Berry, Pat and Berry and Sunday and everything else. And I think if we can break even Donegal in the middle of the park, I think that's the big area around there. Pick up the breaking ball in that area. We can have possession of the ball, keep possession of the ball, and don't allow them to get possession of the ball. And the other thing is our mass like kicking the ball, so they will kick a fair bit of ball. So it's important for Donegal to keep that, you know, don't get turnovers and everything else and stop them, the ability of them, put pressure on that out the field and run at them and run. I would say, you know, keep, as you said, space in that there, especially when Michael Murphy's inside and the players in front of him, get space and run, run, run at them. And I think that's what you should use as much as possible on Sunday. Yeah. And, and obviously you need big, big men around the middle, Martin. Uh, if you're going to leave Michael Murphy in there, obviously there's a, there's a couple of options for Declan Boner, so there is in the middle of the park. Yeah, and and you know the situation is that you're not always maybe you know leave Michael Murphy and 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 there inside you can take him out at times maybe and there's no harm then to put an odd high ball in on top of uh, Patrick Berry in there who remember the famous day they played our man I think it was up on the athletic grounds where a first high ball went in Patrick Berry caught it and stuck it in the back of the net so I think you can use that tactic but you're right in the middle of the field and we've got big men that field whether it's Jason McGee, Q McFadden, hopefully Michael Langan's fit. You've Kieran Thompson who's a natural midfielder in that area. So a lot of players. Sure, McGonagall as well. It's due back. Uh, Kieran McGonagall back that I mean he's had a great year and it's great great that he is back and I mean that's great that's another big plus of Kieran McGonagall's fit to go as well so we've got we've got big men in that area we've power in that area and the good thing about them big men we talk about they all can play ball as well so yeah that's I, I've said it's a big area you know they They've gone with Jarl Dog Burns now, our mad wing back. He's a you know, one big player for them. Maybe his battle, even with Kieran Thompson, is going to be like more like a midfield battle in that and in, in that area and that area. But I think that the midfield is very, very important, whatever way. And it's an, still an important area in Gaelic football to one because both teams will probably press on the kick out. And uh, you know uh, um, that, and that means that probably the kickout will go long. Probably from from both teams will go long. And I mean, who are Ma playing goals is going to be a big question as well. They've gone with Ethan Rafferty his last while, who actually managed in Jordan's, and who I didn't know he was a goalkeeper at all. He's always played most of his football out the field. But a brilliant striker of the ball and a very strong striker and good on the ball and able to come out the field with the ball as we've seen in the games in the league. So there's a lot of still decisions. Do you, do you put the pressure on him, Martin? Do you love the high ball and test him early on? Well, well, he actually would be a midfielder centre forward. So he might be good enough on the air and everything else, but uh, definitely in a one-to-one situation, he'd be no more so than you know, not a natural goalkeeper who didn't grow up as a goalkeeper. And else. that's where you maybe you could make hay with a goalkeeper that's not used, you know, to go into goals and everything else. And uh, you know, we know Kerry what they did to did what they did against Monon when they when they put pressure. So some of the some some teams put different pressure on goalie, but definitely you would have to say not if he plays in goals and he I didn't see the Armagh team ring us and him not being a natural goalkeeper. It's understandable you put a bit of pressure on. Yeah. Uh well mentioned two sitting alls, man. You, you already spoke about Brendan McCall, who's had a fantastic year and has really stepped up in that in that fullback role. Martin has, mm-hmm. has taken on some of the stars of of the sport this year and has done very, very well on them. Uh, and Patter Mogan was on the verge of becoming Ulster player of the year a couple of seasons ago. Um, is this the championship that Mogan can can tear it up again and have a go? Yeah, I think so. And it's interesting round round traveling around the country talking to different people in, in, in different counties uh the sense that you know they really rate him highly Patter Mogan's rated highly and that's always a good sign when you hear people outside your own county rating a player and and, and what, what he's about and everything else you know and he he adds that link which is very very important and it doesn't matter you can play him in the half forward lane take him back and use him as sweeper you can play him sweeper you can play him wing back yeah he's a fabulous footballer we know that very well built and everything else and very good and can kick a score as well so yeah it's a big it's a big year. For, it's, a, it's a big year for 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 Patter, But uh, when we talk, you know, when you analyze him as a footballer, he's, you know, he he deserves to be in that first fifteen in Donegal. And you know, it's not the easy. You know, some it's not the easiest team when everybody's available to get into. And he's he's really turned into a fabulous footballer and a big big plus for Donegal to have. So then, Martin, how do you see this one go? We're a couple of days out here now from uh, from from the start of the game, and as we all know, a lot has happened since that day uh, that we beat Arma in in the league. But how's this one going to go, do you think, on, on, on Sunday? 
Well, first of all, Morris Deegan's going to have to be on top of his game and be really on top of his game from from the minute the ball's thrown in. It's a big game. It's a big game for him. I, I was sad about people would tell you that that Goldig is probably the best referee in the country. A lot of people say that. Even players will tell you that there. But I always remember the first game that Goldig refed in Ulster. He came up to referee. I think it was 2006. Tyrone were our Ireland champions and Derry were playing them in the first round. I think it was Noma. And at half time, Tyrone hadn't scored. I think the referee, that I think he had to take a week off work afterwards with the pressure and everything else he was under that day. He didn't realise what Ulster Fuck was about. So Morris Deegan might take the week off after, after this game and everything else, but he'd have to be on top of it. This is going to be you know, intense stuff from day one with everything that's happened, particularly and everything else. So it was a great occasion. It's great to some battle buffet and everything else. I think it'll go down to the wire, Ross. You know, I think it'll be very, very close. I think it will go down to the wire and everything else. But I just think maybe Donegal of that wee bit more talent. I feel just that wee bit more, hopefully, maybe even to come off the bench and maybe make a difference. I wouldn't rule out extra time, as I said earlier on. But listen, we, we know, as being Donegal men, we'll take a one-point victory. And, you know, if we could win it, it would be one of the sweetest ones that, that we've won in a while. And you'll take an early goal from Patrick and Bertie again. I'll take an early goal from anybody. It doesn't matter who scores. If Lumpy even kicks into the net, we'll be we'll be happy enough. We've had a lot of famous goals, and in I, I remember a famous one. I think it was two thousand and seven. Kevin Casty scored a very late goal against Armagh to beat them and and Val Buffet. They were saying it was a square ball and everything else, but it was allowed on the day and it was a big goal to get right at the end of the game. So we'll take any kind of a score we can get earlier on. But yeah, to be important to get a good start, Donegal. I think to to dictate the game. No team likes chasing the game, and particularly against Ulster teams, it's hard to chase the game. I think Armagh will be no, no different than anything else. But there's a lot of pressure on Armagh coming, a lot of pressure coming. This is a big year for them, uh, this whole setup, the management team and everything else. They've been a while around, and they need to win an Ulster Championship, so it's a big year for them, and uh, that's why this game is massive for both counties. OK, we look forward to Championship footballs back. Martin McHugh, thank you. Thanks, Oshie.